All right, so we're going to continue on with regular expressions. We'll just review. We only got a little bit of time yesterday. Uh, so we'll review what regular expressions are. They're mainly used to search for patterns in text strings and for reading data files and, and parsing out specific data that we want to read. I showed you some uh, Blizzard files yesterday. Remember that? Um, let's see if I still have those just to show it. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so you can pull out different information from a random text. Um, so it's, it's a very powerful, and they can also be very cryptic. We talked about how they're difficult to read. Um, but the, the typical example in Ruby, and regular expressions are used in every language that I know of because they're so powerful. There's some version of, of a regular expression in everything. JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, uh, Python, any language you could think of has, has regular expressions. So the uh, example here is that I can check to see if a string matches some pattern. And we did this yesterday using the IRB. So let's say I had a string that had, this is a lazy fox. Uh, and I wanted to search and see, does that pattern have a match in my string? So I, I usually read this like, does my string match does my string match a pattern? And the pattern is done not in quotes, but just two forward slashes. So you can't put this in quotes. This is just, uh, uh, so let's look at is. Is is found in here? Where, where would is be found? Because this, uh, this method returns an index into the string of where that founds, found, founds it finds it. So 2, 0, 1, 2, where else? 5. OK, so this returns the first occurrence of the pattern IS in this string. So it doesn't find this one. It found the IS here. OK, so 0 is T, 1 is H, uh, 2 is the IS. So it tells you the beginning part of where that is found in the string. All right, good question. So it's going to find it at 4. So the space was found here, and then the IS. So a space matches a space. All the letters match themselves, and numbers match themselves. Remember, we did that yesterday a little bit. All right? So we talked about this. This particular method here, this equal tilde sign, returns the index into the string. All right, and so we talked about letters matching themselves. Sensitivity m makes a difference. Uh, capital and lowercase letters. Numbers match themselves. And so now let's get into some special characters. There are ways of matching, since we're trying to create patterns, sometimes we don't care what the letter is, but we care about things that are around it. So the first one we'll talk about is a period. A single period matches any single character, any one character. So let's look at that in IRB. If I have my same string, A, and I want to look for is, um, I can replace this with any single character, IS. All right? You can think of it like a wild card. Any character followed by an I followed by an S. So what, what would this return here? One, very good. It, it found it at the any character, which is the H, followed by an I followed by an S. So if I had another string that had something else like, uh, there is a fox, how about that? And I, and I try to match that against that same pattern, where is that going to come in to? Five or six, five. So the, the space is the any character, and the IS is the literal ISs after that. 
So the space matched here, and here it matched the H. So it's a, it's a wild card character that I can put anywhere in my string to match any single character. All right, so that's very useful. Uh, I can use symbols, yeah. So we'll get into all of that. There's lots of symbols. What about... Oh, yes, yes, any single character. So we'll do that one. What would this, uh, where would this match in my B string? All right, so it's going to match the E and the space followed by an I and an S. So it's at four. Zero, one, two, three, four. E, space, I, S. So if I had symbols in here, How about that? Um, and I tried to match that against my anything followed by an IS. It would be close to the end of the string here, which is some number 13. So it matched the ampersand IS. So again, any character, any character you can think of, the period matches. All right, so you see we're starting to build up these, these patterns to try to get through data that we don't, know exactly what's going to be th before the IS, and we don't care. We just know that we want to have an IS in here somewhere. Yes? Ah, what if you're looking for a period? So let's, let's change my, my uh, there is a fox string to be adding a period at the end. So there's a fox, and I want to find all references to fox in my string only if it's at the end of a sentence. You could think of it that way, right? So does my B match something with a, a fox followed by a period? Now, that will actually match because a period matches a period, right? A period matches any character, and a period is in any character. But if, if I want that to physically be a, a period, I have to escape it. A lot like we do for the carriage return in double quoted strings and the tab character, remember that? We put a backslash before that, and that says, don't treat this like an any character, treat it like a period. Treat it like a literal period. So that matches actually the same place, but that will not match something like this. If I had a string with a, this is a fox, uh, cave, all right? And I tried to look for, uh, in my D string, does it match fox with a period? Will that match? It matches the fox and the, and the uh, pound sign. So the, the pound sign is, is still a match. So you've got to be careful with a period to, to really think, is that what I'm looking for? That's an in, this is an any character. This is a physical, literal period. All right. And so we can also match beginning of lines, end of lines, starting of strings, and ending of strings. So the, the ones most of that we wor work with are uh, beginning and ending of strings. Okay. So what that means is, uh, let's say I want to look for... Um, let's say I, I have a string that looks like this is the fox, and I want to see, does it match a th? Uh, let's change it. Does, does my string match a th? Where is that going to find it? At the zero position, all right? Um, it's not a good, good example, is it? Uh, you have to use a different method that will return an array of positions. So uh, we'll, we'll use that, like the scan method, for instance, or the split method. Um, well, I don't have a good example of this, but I can say... Does it match, at the beginning of the string, uh, a th, right? But if I have my 
string of what is a a does that match at the beginning of a string is is that going to return something if i if i have my a here sorry if my a string is this is a lazy fox is that going to match why not a capital letter right so i get nothing back if i say Trying to think of a good. I can't think of a good test. <laughs> is yeah, I know I got foxes. I don't know why. Uh, is that is that going to match? Why? Well, I have a th in the string. How about this? Let's do this one first. Is that going to match? Somewhere? Yes, it matches at 8. How about this one, though? The a means the uh, start of a string. So that means... I want to, at the beginning of the string, I want to have a lowercase t and a lowercase h. So in this particular string, there is no such thing, and that will return nothing. Okay, so beginning and ending of string, uh, does, does my a have in it a fox at the end of the string? Is that going to return true or false? All right, good. Now, a lot of people make this mistake does uh, does my do I have a fox at the end of the string? Okay, what does this mean? This means I want a pattern where I first have the end of the string followed by an f zero f o x. How can I go past the end of a string? The end of a string must always be at the end of the string if I or at the end of my pattern if I'm going to look for something like that. So this this doesn't make sense. This crashes or gives me nothing back because I'm never going to find uh, something after the end of a string. It just doesn't make sense. How about just the end of the string? What do you think that will return? Well, it returns the same thing as the length of the string because I'm basically looking right here at the end of the X before the end of the string here. And all of these characters are, are the total number that I found. So I've found one past the x here, which is essentially the length of my string. All right, any questions on that so far? Uh, it becomes a little easier after we actually use some of these. Uh, let's do some other characters. These are special characters, and they're, they're designed with a slash to differentiate that from a matching a w. I need to match a special character, which in uh, lowercase w means any letter, digit, or underscore. And the, the mnemonic for this is it's a word character, anything that will make up a word. So a letter, a digit, or an underscore. Or like a, a proper variable name, you could think of it that way too. So if I want to match anything... Uh, followed by fox, where is that going to match in my string here? It matches the space, okay? So is that in my string? Is that a slash w? No, so this should return nil. It could not find a fox preceded with a, another letter, another letter, digit, or underscore. Okay, it couldn't find that pattern, so it returns nil for me. All right, does that make sense? How about the opposite of this is, this is like a not W, the capital letter of a, of a W pattern is the opposite of a lowercase W. So in this case, it means anything that slash W doesn't match. <coughs> All right, so a capital slash w looks for anything. So this returns 
the, and let's look at our A again before it gets off the screen. This returns any <laughs> character that's not a digit, underscore, or letter. So a space happens to be that. It's not a digit, underscore, or letter. So that matches at position 11. All right, a D. Let's say uh, how would I create a pattern that would tell me how many foxes I have? So I want to search for any number uh, prior to my fox foxes word. So I'd say A doesn't match. What what kind of pattern do you think? Hmm? Little d, okay, that matches a digit. Slash d. What else? All right, so if I just do that, what is, where is that going to return? It's going to return the 7. It found a digit at the 7th position in my string. All right, so I found that, but there, are, there might be more of those, so uh, what else would I add to my string here? I could do a period. That would be one followed by any character. Or if I'm looking for two, char two digits in a row, I could do two digits in a row. Two slash Ds tells me I want to find two digits in a row, followed by a space, followed by fox. All right. This will happen to be the same index, but it matches all the way up to the end of the fox here. A 10 space fox. All right. Now, would that match if I had this? I don't know why I'm talking about foxes. Does that match? Why? There's no two digits. So that'll return nil because I don't have two digits in a row here. So these are all variable. I can have any digit, but I have to have two of them in a row here. Everybody see that? So what we're doing is we're building up these little matches here uh, using these special characters. So a capital D matches the opposite of a lowercase D. I think that's not a digit, which is pretty much everything but a 0 through 9. A slash S matches any white space. A white space could be a space, a tab, a new line. A capital S matches any non-white space, so uh, that would be any letter, digit, um, punctuation, special characters, anything like that that's not a space or a new line. So they have lots of these special characters, and we utilize those to, uh, to build up our pattern. All right, I want to show you a website that is used a lot in our code. It's called rubular.com. Uh, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Don't tell me. Rub, rubular.com. There we go. This is a, a regular expression tester written with the Ruby language, and it shows you all the different patterns and things down here. So we have a slash D is any digit, slash capital D, any non-digit, etc. And so I can put my regular expression here and my test string here. So I could say something like this is a fox. And I want to search for fox in my string. It tells me what matched. So this is easier to see. Uh, let's, say, let's say if I have, uh, I have 10 foxes. You can see where, it, where that pattern matches in my string. It found FOX as the entire pattern. See how it highlights it there? It's really useful testing regular expressions. So what uh, regular expression could I use to find the digits in this string? Slash D. All right, if I do one, one D, this, this gives us a a false positive. See how it's actually uh, have a space in between here? 
it tells you all the matches that it found. It found a match here, and it found a match here. But what if I want to find two digits in a row? Put another slash D, all right? And see how it changes it. Now it's this is the entire pattern. I found a, a 1 followed by a 0. All right? Um, and you have 100. So if I have another digit in here, it matches two digits in a row, but it didn't match the 100. See that? So it found the first two matches, the 1 and the 0 matched here. It would normally find the zero is zero as well, too. But this is trying to find you the first. Uh, it's not perfect. <laughs> but uh, it gets you close. So, so this, is, this is really useful. Um, I'll let you use this on tests and everything as we have regular expression tests next quarter. Um, so you could get used to using this very useful stuff. All right. Uh, yeah, pretty comprehensive. It's got almost everything you need here. Not a lot, but uh, but they're very powerful. What I can look look for. All right. Um, so if I want to say at the start of a string, do I have a uh, two digits in a row? I don't have any two digits in a row unless I put something like that. See that? At start of a string, followed by two digits, then I have 10, 1, 0 matching. More? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, this is this is the or command here, similar to Ruby's uh, piping expression. Um, so I can look for uh, fox or foxes, and it found me the first one, which is foxes. Fox. Um, what's another? A, V, or A, N. Okay? It finds an A, V, which is in the have, or an A, N. So that's either or of those will match. See how that works? All right, good. All right, so now, if there aren't any questions about those, uh, let's get in. It, it gets more interesting when we have these modifiers. So we, sometimes we want to match more of something, more of, of uh, more digits or multiple digits, or we don't know how many digits there are, but we want to match all of them we can find. So the, uh, the star matches zero or more occurrences of the preceding character. Okay? So we, we modify the preceding character. So let's go look at that in Rubular. Uh, let's say I want to look for uh, a digit, but I want any number of those digits, okay? Zero or more digits. So it found the 10, the 10, and the 100, but it also found a match everywhere in between the letters. See all these in-betweens here? Why is that? Why do you think that's the case? Because... This is the same thing as doing this. There's, if I'm going to match nothing, zero or more. Zero or more digits could mean zero digits. I want to find zero digits. So it matches every, every character in between there, uh, or between the characters. It's kind of strange. Is there a way to make it so that it only picks up on digits, or just zero? Um, yeah. So the next thing here is we want to match one or more occurrences, which is slightly different. That means I have to have at least one digit, but I'll take as many as you give me. Okay? Um, so I would change this to a slash D, and I want to look for one or more of them. And so now I have the 10, the 10, and the 100. So it found all three of those. 
so that one or more of the prior character, which in this case is a single digit, it's not just the D, it's the single digit. All right, I can do that also on a T. I want to find one or more T's. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't have any T's. How about uh, A's? Oh, that's why. See, it was right. All right, so one or more A's together. Uh, so if I had several A's, it would find all of these A's and the single A's by themselves, one or more of these. All right? Does that make sense so far? No, this is exactly some number of those. We'll get into those in a minute. We'll talk about this, this greedy stuff later. Um, let's do one or none of the previous, previous character. One or none. So that's a, tough, that's a, a weird one as well. But I could say I want one of the A's or none of the A's. So it found all the A's, but it also found that's the same as doing nothing again, right? I, except this doesn't show it, but it's looking for any match, any, any place in the string. So I could have uh, H followed by one or more A's. So you see I have an H followed by at least one A followed by a bunch of A's. And this one found it as well, H followed by a single A. Now, if I have another H in here, it doesn't find that one because it's not followed by at least one A. See how that works? Isn't this cryptic enough for you yet? We have yet to begin cryptic. All right, so let's take a... Uh, <laughs> take your choice, red or blue. Uh, so let's do... A fairly simple one. This is your your number, and I want you to match the phone number. All right. So I want you to write the regular expression that will match this string. All right. So I'll pause while you do that. All right. So one one way you could think of would be to have some D's like this. That's, that matches all the single characters, but not the entire phone number as a string. So that's not quite right. So I, then I could do this. That starts to get part of the first part, the prefix of my phone number, followed by a dash, followed by four more Ds. Right? So that works. That's one way to do it. Um, I can shorten this down to say... I want to have one or more little d's, one or more digits, followed by a dash, followed by one or more digits. That works as well. See how many different ways we can do that? Um, now, I want you to think about will that match um, this? See, the problem with that string is that it will match this as well. Why is that? It's one or more, right? I've got a bunch of them on this side of my dash and a bunch of them on this side of my dash. So it's not quite a good enough phone number checker. It's close, but we want to be exact that we only want three on this side and four on this side. So the, the first way I did it would be the exact way. I'm going to have three followed by four. And that finds a phone number inside of this string, which is OK. But it also finds my, my actual phone number here. But that's tedious to write all these Ds out here. So there's some other uh, functionality that I can do. If you look down here, find exactly three of the previous character. So we use this in curly braces to modify 
curly braces with a single number in it modifies the previous character. So I can say I want three digits, exactly three digits, followed by a dash, followed by how would I modify this one then? Right, I'd put four, followed by exactly four digits, and that would work as well. And that's, a, that's yet another way to figure out how to match these. So there's, there's no, in a lot of cases, there's no exact way to do these. Uh, and it takes some playing around. You can shorten these, make them more cryptic. But as long as it gets the data that you want, and you test multiple things uh, like this, because so, I don't want to match that, that's not a phone number, then, you, then you'll, you can write your regular expressions however you want. There's some, there's some leeway in this. It's not a science, like programming. We're programming a pattern to match. So you have to think, think like a pattern. All right, isn't that fun? All right, how about change this into a social security number? Is it? That's what I figured. So how would I change that to match the social security number instead? All right, so I could just add a, a slash D2 followed by another slash, a dash, and that's going to match my social security number. All right, so this all, and you want to be as exact as possible because what happens if somebody writes uh, some things like this? You don't want to match that because it's not a typical uh, social security way people write social security numbers, right? This might be a foreign phone number, and we, we don't want to match that. We want to match it only if it has a dash. So I could have done this with a period. What does a period mean again? any character, and followed by any character. So three digits followed by any character, followed by two digits, followed by any character, followed by four digits. It actually matches all of these pieces here. So that's, uh, we want to have it as exact as possible. Only use these random characters if I really mean it. I mean these wildcard characters. Right? Any questions on any of that? Isn't that fun? Say yes, Dave. Just this like is fun. Yeah. Just like what? Just like only different. Just like fun, only not so much. This one here. Um, this one is used for uh, these options at the bottom. So you can uh, change, put an I, and make the regular expression case insensitive. So if I have, uh, if I look for an, a, an S and I put this as case insensitive, it finds the capital S's as well. That's what that means. I typically rarely ever use that modifier because I want to be exact. I'm going to say S. Or I could say S or S. Yeah, there's lots of ways around that. So. All right? Any other questions? All right, I think that's enough for today.